So about two weeks ago, we had our Tuesday meeting here, and we talked about um, the prophetic word, and we talked about writing down the prophetic word. We talked about that when we write down the revelation, what God puts in our mind and our heart, that if we write it down, uh, we could give it to our runner, Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, and he could run with it. What God is pretty much saying is that when I reveal something to you, sometimes we get these impressions in our mind and these strategies about work, our strategies about family, circumstance, stuff like that. Sometimes somebody give us an encouraging word over the phone or a friend shake her hand and invite us to lunch and we get these things. Write them down because when you write them down, they become a record. And when you actually have a record, you could actually see what God has been doing in your life and you could go back to it and grow in it. And actually, <clears throat> the importance of this is because, guess what? When we prophesy, if anything we do, we do it in part. Meaning that it's still a piece. So if there was a piece of pie up here, maybe when we get that written word or that spoken word, um, one third of it, we get it. When we write it down, when we meditate on it, another two third of what God is revealing actually begins to, to come up. So we talked about the written word. Um, chap um, next point we did was, we said that the scripture, we can use scripture, we can use this Bible, the Bible that I was just telling you about, we could use that as a platform to prophesy to people. So sometimes it's, it's not just God has a word for you. Yes, he really does. This, this Bible is full with like so many words for you. You could just put your name in it and say, this is what God thinks about me. That's a prophetic word. But we see that in the life of Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 21, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news, to set the captives free. To, to, to bring peace to the brokenhearted, to mend the brokenhearted, all this different stuff. So what, what is he declaring? He's declaring the word about himself. And then at the end of that proclamation, he says, today the word has been fulfilled in your ear, I'm listening, or in your ears. What is he saying? He's saying that was a Logos word. This is a Logos word. The physical Bible is a Logos word. But when you have a Logos word with a prophetic grace, with a now word or now season for that word, it sheds light for you. So Jesus Christ was shedding light to these group of people which were in the synagogue. He was teaching and saying, hey, I am who this actual scripture is talking about. So we can use the scripture as a platform. The last thing we did was we actually practiced writing down a word. We split up people in front of here and that was cool. That was pretty cool. Um, and we actually gave thank you cards out and we put people named that we are pre-saved. People pre-saved is just somebody that, you know, probably know God exists, but they haven't made that step of faith. It's cool. Maybe it's a co-worker, maybe it's a family member. We wrote down Bob and we gave it to three or four people that were in our group and everybody wrote an encouraging word for Bob. Laura did this, Laura McLaughlin, um, Chester's wife, amen, um, did this and she called me the next day and she said, no, she texted me, she said, Felix? My co-worker is super blessed by this. Felix, I can't even explain. Thank you for doing this because I felt in the last two weeks, I've grown so much just by hearing God's voice, just by these activations. And I was like, whoa, thank you because I had, <laughs> I had felt like I had, didn't do too well that night. Let's put it that way. But apparently I did and she, um, she was blessed. So that's a recap actually of what we did and we're going to get into our word. So if you never heard the word prophecy, this is what we do. We define it, and this is what the word we use. So working definition, so please forgive me if it doesn't have its fullness, but this is what, we, what we're practicing. Prophecy to us is knowing the heart and mind of God for ourselves and for others. Knowing the mind and the heart, the nature and the thoughts of God towards ourselves and then towards others. Right? It is being able to share His love and thoughts to others specifically. That's what we're going to do tonight, and that's what we've been doing for the past couple of weeks on a Tuesday. Prophecy brings people into encounters with God. When we begin to operate in a prophetic ministry, we actually shed light on someone and say, hey, out of all the 7 billion people in the world, Kimmy, you're so important to God. And then, you know what, Max? You're important too. So he could actually be celebrating with you and helping you. He's a good, good father. He knows all of his children's names, and he's always there for us. And so when we begin to share a prophetic light on someone or share a word of knowledge or encouragement and strengthening, guess what? We're saying you matter and that, that love that we release in that word actually brings you into encounter with God. So let's get started. First, let's just say that you've never done this before. Don't panic. Shana, you've been coming, what, a month now? On a Tuesday, Shana, the first day, she said, I'm not going to do this. And guess what? Shana's one of my 
one of my favorite people come in and participate. And I asked her if she's awake because I missed her, miss you at church, and love you, sister. But Hannah and Shana was like, hey, I'm going to step out. The second one, she did it, and she gave Amadeo a great word. And last week, she gave my, two weeks ago, she gave my wife a great word. And I'm like, Shana, you better come up here and grab this my girl. And so she's been growing. So listen, this is a beginner. We all practicing. I am not a pro trust. I should be the, the, the least person sharing this. But I've actually been trained and been practicing myself. So guess what? Um, it's going to be really um, hard to receive something that you don't want. Suppose I bought you an iPhone 10, and you're telling me, I don't want that. I want Samsung. You know, <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm a little, like, trust me, we have Samsung. But if, even if God was to give that to you and have a gift to provide you, you actually have to take it by faith, right? You have to desire it. And so God desires you to carry his heart. Everyone can prophesy, but not everyone is called to the office of prophet. Don't get it all twisted and get all complicated in your mind. Don't worry about being called a prophet or not. God has called every one of us to prophesy and to encourage one another, right? And um, the prophet is just about a person growing in their prophetic gifting and having a sphere of influence. That's all it is. So don't get twisted. God encourages us to pursue the gift of prophecy. He actually say, hey, pursue me, pursue the gift. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 to 5 says, It is good that you're enthusiastic. Sorry, like me sharing this word. <laughs> trying. It is good that you are enthusiastic and passionate about spiritual gifts. He's saying, Corinthian church, the church, you are operating the most gifts. And I love it. Especially prophecy, he says. For when someone speaks in tongues, no one understands a word he says. Because he's not speaking to people, but to God. He's speaking intimate min min mis mysteries in his spirit. So when I was over there, I was praying in the spirit. But you guys don't need to hear that. It's just for my personal edification. So imagine if everybody here just starts speaking in tongues for like a whole 45 minutes. If there's no interpretation, it's not going to be edifying. Let me continue. It says, but when someone prophesies, share God's heart and mind and perspective, he speaks to encourage people and to build them up. So prophecy should actually make you feel lighter like a helium balloon. Just send you up closer to God, God's throne, etc. So it builds them up and to bring comfort. The one who speaks in tongue advances his own spiritual progress. So I'm over there progressing myself, you know. While the one who prophesies builds up the church. I would be delighted if all spoke in tongues. But I desire even more that in, to impart a prophetic revelation to others. Greater gain comes through the one who prophesies than the one who speaks in tongue. Unless there's an interpretation. So that it builds up the entire church. So he's saying, hey, if you want to speak in tongues, cool. Make it be a private thing for right now. But I'd rather you prophesy when you come to minister publicly. Okay? Nothing wrong with tongues, guys. I do it every day. Um, number two, break ties with any past negative connection with the prophetic. We're in the Caribbean region. And there's a lot of negative interactions with the prophetic. Um, some people, before you even share a word, they ask you to PayPal pin them and send them some money. That's not what I'm expecting from you right now. I'm just telling you what's happening even up to a couple days ago. We're in a Caribbean culture and some of the interaction and exposure of the prophetic has kind of like, God, make people want to reject it because of how it has been displayed. But we want to create a healthy prophetic culture. A culture that strengthens and encourages and builds up and edifies and exhorts people. So maybe you have been affected by wrong practice. I, I did and I had to ask God forgiveness. Maybe somebody in this ministry, maybe myself, have interacted with you in a negative way. Trust me, we're all growing, we make mistakes. Forgive me, forgive that person, let it go and let's grow. The third thing I would say, ask for the gift. Believe that you can have it and that you will receive the gift of prophecy. Luke 11 verse 10 says, For everyone who asks, receive. And believe in the promise that as you ask God for the gift, even now, just say, Lord, and you're quiet in your heart, say, Lord, I want this gift. I want to grow in my prophetic gift. And he begin to activate that. So now that all the the the, the actual um the actual announcements and all that different background information about prophecy is gone, let's get into the teaching. Today we're gonna to be talking about a word of knowledge. I mentioned earlier that the word of knowledge is hindsight. It's past information given by the Spirit of God, revealing it to you. It is a revelatory um, gift of giving you information released by God to you about a person's past. So for example, um, your knees, right? I didn't, I didn't feel the knee too much, but I felt it a little bit. 
And I said, let me go for it and see somebody have a knee issue. Liver. I'm like, God, I don't even know the body, the anatomy of the human body. That great white liver, but the word liver jumped out to me. I just wrote it down. And so what am I doing? I'm getting words of knowledge about somebody's actual situation, circumstances that God is highlighting to me so that he can do something for it. And if I release it by faith, there's an exchange that opens up. I believe, I can't explain it too, too much, but I believe it opens up heaven for that situation for God to bring breakthrough. And so that is why we have to grow in our prophetic gifting. Let's explore how the word of knowledge and prophecy actually works together simultaneously in the life of Jesus. Now, in the book of John, he starts out the chapter, and um, at the end of the chapter, he's speaking about an encounter in verse 43, if you want to follow. I'll read it, but if you want to follow, John 1, verse 43 to 51. It's an encounter with a guy named Nathaniel. You probably know the encounter, you probably heard the story before about a fig tree, etc., etc. He said, the next day, Jesus decided to go to the region of Galilee. There he found Philip and said to him, come and follow me. So he's recruiting, just recruiting his disciples. Now Philip, Andrew, and Peter were all from the same village of Bethesda. Then Philip went to look for his friends and Nath friend Nathaniel and told him, we found him. We found the one we've been waiting for. It's Jesus, son of Joseph, Joseph from Nazareth, the anointed one. He's the one of whom that Moses and the prophets prophesied would come. Verse 46, Nathaniel sneered. He said, what good thing could ever come from Nazareth? Guys, Jesus came from the hood, you know. <laughs> Jesus came from the hood. If he didn't come from the hood, this wouldn't be Nathaniel's perspective. You know, <coughs> Nazareth was a really cool place to come from. You know, that's not what Jesus Christ came from. He was born in Bethlehem, but Nathaniel knew the scripture. He's like, come from Nazareth? You mean Nazareth, the place where blah, 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 blah. I mean, you have all these reference points. So he says, Nazareth? What good thing could ever come from Nazareth? Philip answered, come and let's find out. So when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, so from afar off, Jesus seen probably 50, 40 feet, he said, now here comes a true son of Israel, or Israelite, an honest man with no hidden motive. Who doesn't want that person in your life? An honest person with no <laughs> hidden motive. Lord sent 10,000 of them in Jesus' name. Nathaniel was stunned and said, but you've never met me. Never met me. How do you know anything about me? Hear what Jesus said. Jesus answered, Nathaniel, right before Philip came to you, I saw you sitting under the shade of the fig tree. Nathaniel blurted out, Teacher, but this is the same Nathaniel. Who can come from Nazareth? You see, you know, the who can come from Nazareth? And now all of a sudden, Teacher, Rabbi, you are truly the Son of God and the King of Israel. Goes on in Jesus, taking it a little further, you know. He says, do you believe simply because I've told you I saw you sitting under a fig tree? You will experience even more impressive things than that. I prophesy to you eternal truth. From now on, you would see an open heaven and gaze upon the Son of Man like a stairway reaching into the sky with messengers of God climbing up and down upon him. So what he's saying is that you would see angels ascending and then descending upon the Son of Man, which is a terminology Jesus Christ used of himself. So sometimes, let's just be honest, Sometimes people are going to be skeptic of the things of God. Let's just be honest. They're going to be skeptic of the things of God. Here's a skeptic Israelite. A one that is not hitting motives. A true person, somebody you want on your team. You know, he called a spade a spade. But he's a skeptic. And we can understand why. Because he knows the scripture. like, Nazareth, what's going on there? So he's like, God, God will bring people that might be skeptic to the supernatural. And when you tell them what, what is happening in your life. All you have to tell them is come and see. Do the same thing Philip said. Boy, journey, legs growing out. What? Come and see. People getting healed. Come and see. No matter skepticism, don't try to explain. This is what the church tried to do. The church tried to explain to the world how all these different. No, 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 just come and see. Come, come and see. Come. Or can I pray for you? You know, when I get at people skeptic, I say, okay, I can argue with you, but do you have a need in your life right now that I can pray for? And if God shows up, you can give him glory. Yeah. And I pray. And they get healed. I'm like, wow, it's amazing. So always tell skeptics to come and see. When Nathaniel comes within Jesus' proximity, Jesus spoke to him about his character. <clears throat> Jesus never met him, never known from Adam, from physical, physically. He never met him before. And he, he spoke about his character, his eternal template on life. He said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Another translation says that. Now here comes a true son of Israel, an honest man with no hidden motive. What a true thing, an encouraging thing, an affirmation thing that Nathaniel would receive. 
However, Nathaniel responded to him and said, How is it that you know me? How is it that you know this about me? So it resonated with Nathaniel. The Holy Spirit revealed to Jesus, This guy is a true guy. It's a real man. An honest person. So Jesus saw, um, saw him and, and began to share about what, what he encountered, what he sensed from him. The other thing is that Jesus Christ saw that he was coming, shared the word, but saw that Nathaniel was a little hesitant. You ever release a word over somebody, they're a little hesitant to receive it? Mm, you know the type of thing, man? Mm, uh, I don't know, I don't know, mm, I don't know what you say so. So, it's a little hesitant. So Jesus could have stopped there. The church kind of stops there when people kind of, mm. Don't stop. Ask the Lord for something for them. So here is Jesus. You are, Ryan, you are an honest man. Pure motives. And then Ryan is like, mm. And then God says, okay, go a little further. The Holy Spirit says, oh, when you were by the fig tree. How in the world is man sitting by the fig tree? Or when you were by the post office, I saw you posting mail to your grandparents. How do you know that there's nobody around me? And then that's a conversation that opened up faith. Because that's what a word of knowledge does. When a skeptic rejects the word and power of God, a word of knowledge, information about his life, factual information about how he's of the individual, stops him in his traps of skepticism and opens up for faith. So in this, and in this actual um, aspect that God is doing right now in Nathaniel, there's three parts of this prophetic encounter. Affirmation comes and truth insight from Jesus. He just spoke to his character. We mentioned that. His present situation, his identity. You're an honest man, no guile. Jesus was reading the now of Nathaniel and his identity and virtues. Because of Nathaniel's skepticism, he couldn't receive the word. But then Jesus Christ pointed up, fig tree. Oh, fig tree? And I could just imagine that when somebody released that word, Nazareth, he were praying. I could just imagine Nathaniel praying. Nathaniel probably said, is this true? Is it, I mean, he was probably having an intimate conversation. And sometimes we have intimate conversations. And he's like, well, somebody, how do you know this? That broke the skepticism, made us aware that God has his finger and his hands and his eyes on top of us, and we could actually be drawn into an encounter with God. Now, what did it actually draw Nathaniel in? It, it allowed Jesus to break out that hardness of his heart by that word of knowledge, you're under a fig tree, for Jesus to reveal what he see and saw in Nathaniel, which he said, this, you think that amazing? You think that is amazing? You're going to see angels ascending and descending on me. You're going to see open heavens around you. You think that amazes you, that fig tree? That you're going to see nothing yet. I'm going to do so much more in your life. The scene that Daniel, in the end of John, I think, in the beginning of Luke, they talk about the angels coming, and when Jesus Christ was caught up into the, into the sky, and they were looking, they were gazing, and two men dressed in white came to them pretty much saying, what are you looking for? This same Jesus is going to come back in like manner. Wow. Daniel got to see it. Nathaniel got to see an open heaven in Jesus' ministry, healing, signs and wonders. He got to see Jesus Christ taken back up. Nathaniel got to see what Jesus Christ said he would see. That's the prophetic. The prophetic speaks to a futuristic word, but sometimes people aren't ready for a futuristic word. Sometimes people need a no word. Because a futuristic word, a prophecy, a, a, a word of foresight needs to be tested over time. It needs to be written down, it needs to be prayed through. But a no word, God want to heal your back. How do you know my back hurting me? It opens up more for ministry. And so, that is it. Um, first off, um, I just want to let you know that all of this information that God has given us through His Spirit is available to every one of us. In Revelation 1 and 8, in Revelation 4 and 8, it says, 4 and 8 says, The four living creatures, each having six rings, were full of eyes around, around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord Almighty, who was and is to come. Who was, who is, and is to come. So, God gives us grace for a word of knowledge. That's the past. Who was? That's the was in people's life. Sophie was. Then he says, okay then, who is? Now. That's the present. That's the insight. Give me insight, God. And then, who is to come? That is future. So, you got to understand that Jesus Christ is not restricted by what he has created. He has created time. God doesn't sit in time. That is why he could be four days late in Lazarus and still be on time. Because anytime he shows up, everything that he's created has to bow to it. And so when we operate in the anointing of God, as sons and daughters of God, as joint heirs in Christ, we actually begin to see time and circumstances bent to us because we operate with the same grace 
So when we show up to time, time begins to bend like how it bent for Jesus. So Jesus could actually see your whole life, and he could see your past, he could see your present, and he could see your future. And if you're going to do ministry in the prophetic, the same grace that you are activated to look at somebody's past, to share encouragement from their past, and give them insight to the future, um, to, the, in, to, to the now, and give them insight for the future, is there for you. You just got to ask for it. So today we're going to practice getting words of encouragement for one another. Got some more information, then we go. Every time you actually get a word of knowledge, you might think it's not you, and you might think it's not God, but it might be God, or it might be you. But flip it. Don't think it's just me. Always think first, it might be God. It just might be God. I got like liver. I was right now in liver. It just might be God. You know, um, left knee or right knee. It just might be God. You know, so because you have the mind of Christ, He shared thoughts with you. You are seated with Him. You're in Christ that when He whispers, it sounds loud. Because you're so close to him, there's such a close proximity in heavenly realms with you and him. You have the mind of Christ. And so think like this, it must be God or it might be God or it might be me. But always think that it might be God first. And sometimes the very word that you get for someone and you reject the very first thing and drop in your spirit, it just might be what they might need to hear. Okay? So let me tell you a little bit about my first interaction with word of knowledge. And then we go from there. My first word of knowledge was, I was at CMB, it was about a year into being a Christian or nine years old, nine months old into being a Christian. And the environment that I was in wasn't really like supernatural. It's, you know, if you pay in your tithes and offering and you're married and you're staying faithful or you're not married and you're, and you're working in purity and you know Jesus loves you, this I know, you're good. That's all. You know, that's the environment that I was in. And the supernatural would kind of hit and miss, you know. And so I was at work one day, and I felt God, when I, when I um, walked past a lady, God highlighted her to me. Now, this is what highlighted me. Is that if you're in a room of 20 or 50 people or less, you might be drawn to a particular area, and something might, or in that area might be drawing your attention. And so this lady used to work in, like, an embossing room or something, in cards, I used to work in cards or something. And this is years ago, this is back in 2006. And when I walked across the, the young lady's desk, I felt the word pregnant. I just felt the word, I went back to my desk, like, pregnant? I'm not pregnant. <laughs> you know? I'm pregnant. And I walked past again, you know, and I felt it, and I wanted to let it go, but it kept on coming up, this idea about pregnant. So I didn't walk up to her and be like, are you pregnant? I didn't, I didn't do that. You gotta use wisdom. So I waited, I waited till maybe like lunch break, um, Kim and I got like third floor, got a little lunch break. And I sat down and I was reading my Bible. I had one King Jimmy that I got, found it somewhere, reading that King Jimmy, all the stuff in red, Jesus' words. And I just reading it because I was just hungry for God. And I'm reading the word and she pops in the kitchen and just me and her. And I just walk up to her and I say, hey, because she's younger than me. I was about 21. She's about 19 at the time. I say, hey, let me ask you a question. There's nothing on this woman that says that she's pregnant. She probably just found out that week, I think. She said, yes, I'm pregnant. And she told me like a couple of weeks. And I could just felt like there was like anxiety over her. I mean, you 18, 19 years old getting pregnant. It's a challenge for anyone, you know, being a father, being a mother, at any age. It's, it comes with responsibility challenges. And I just felt like God was allowing me to tell her, highlight it to me, because he could trust me because I'm learning to hear his heart and say, hey, it's going to be okay for you and that baby. It's going to be okay for you and that baby. Maybe she wasn't hearing that message at home. And God needed to hear that message. Around. So that was my first experience. And my other most recent experience, just hearing somebody encounter with a similar thing was Vanessa. Vanessa used to come to this church. She's um, from Canada. She did six months stint and came on as a chef. She actually texted me this week. She said, God bless you guys, etc. And Vanessa um, called me one day and told her, voice no me and Dorothy. She said, Dorothy had one of the most amazing times with the Lord just now. She said, I went to visit a co-worker of mine who had an accident at work, like got burned or something, you know, and she wanted the managers or supervisors to so check on him. And while I was there, I was drawn to this young lady who was just weeping a little bit or showing this heavy emotion, probably wasn't crying at the time. And she, she's being brave and, and Vanessa about that short with this small and she's tiny. And she walks up to the young lady and she said, hey, I'm practicing hearing God's voice. And I don't know if there's something on your heart that you want to share. You don't know me, you don't have to share. But I'm drawn to you, and I want to tell you, God love you. The young lady said, I'm sitting here, and I'm contemplating booking an abortion. 
because I'm not with the paper father, and it's a messed up situation. And Vanessa was able to counsel her in 25 minutes or less, encourage her, pray for her. I think she checked on her like two or three days. She, she, she was supposed to come to church, she didn't come, whatever. But it doesn't matter that, is that God got one of his daughters to encourage another daughter to say, hey, don't do that. That's how important the word of knowledge is. It highlighted a factual information about what's happening now in somebody's life and to give God's grace over it and say, hey, it's gonna be okay. So those are just things that actually highlight, that God highlighted to us. So here's some last things before I go. Ask God for the gift. God, I want to give a word of knowledge. Lord, I declare right now. Put your hand up. Say, ask. Say, Lord, I want to give. I want to give the word of knowledge and prophecy. Believe that you have it. Receive it by faith. Begin to practice it. Let's go to the activation. Are you guys ready? Every one of you going to play today. <laughs> Every one of you going to play today. So I don't know if you want. Um, here's the thing. I need somebody to hand out these pens. If you have a pen, take a piece of paper. If you have a pen already, save some pens. Everybody get a piece of paper, and we're going to do activations in the word of knowledge. And you could participate. Everybody participate. But guess what? At the end of it, if you get nothing right, you're going to have the best celebration. Because I'm going to cheer you on. Because in our ministry, when somebody doesn't get it, we're not disappointed. We just say, continue to practice and continue to grow. Amen. So get a piece of Here's what I want you to write. This is the first question that I want you to think about. We're going to give you like four or five. The first thing that came to mind was favorite color. Find a favorite. Ask the Lord what a favorite color. Now you can't ask him yet. You could ask him now. You could ask him, but favorite color is the first thing that I popped up. So write that down. Favorite color. Leave a little space. Well, my favorite color. No, don't, 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 don't say nothing. Don't. The favorite color to the person that that you're gonna have because they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna ask the Lord what your favorite color is and they're gonna see if they get it right. Okay. Okay. All right. So um. All right. So this is how it is, right? So deep space. Second thing is um. Um. What would I say? Favorite place to visit. Country. Favorite place to visit. Or region. You could put favorite place or region. Again, the easy one. All right, so write that down. The third thing I want you to try is past jobs, titles or jobs. It could be a company you worked for, it could be the title, it could be the, the country that you worked in, I'm not sure, but whatever relating to a past job, God will give you some insight to a past job, a title, etc. Fourth thing is um, dream job. What is the person's dream job? God, what is what is Richard's dream job, Lord? And then you write it down, you take risks. And then the last thing, give me something from the crowd. Give me something from the crowd. Favorite food. Favorite food. Whoa. Whoa, favorite food. Hallelujah. Okay. So now that you have the five questions, once you write it down. We're going to pair up with the person that you know the least. I, I know the least. So like Shana and Marius, for example. Right? Sophie and Dorothy. You know, um, Ryan and Richard. Um, CJ. You know Nikki a lot. So let me see. Sam and Naomi. Sam and Naomi. Adrian and me. I'm going to try Adrian. So, so I'm going to give more instructions. So this is the part. Now that you have your partner, listen one more time. Here's how it's going to go. Have a seat, guys. Get comfy. You can sit on the ground. You can do Aladdin, sit down or anything. So here's how it's going to go. I've listed out five things. I'm going to give you a minute to ask the Lord on each question, what is Mark's favorite color? So CJ, you ask the Lord. You write it down. What is Mark's favorite place or region to visit? You write it down. What is a past job or title of Mark? You write it down. What is the dream job? Of, you know, a job that God wants to do in his life. You write it down. What is Mark's favorite food? You write it down. At the end of it, I want you guys to exchange and talk about it. Okay? And I want to I get feedback. 
I want it because you might get three out of five. You may get two out of five. You might get nothing, but we're going to have fun. And you're going to be practicing hearing God's voice. So let me just put a little music in the background. And we're going to go from there. So when I give you the okay, the minute will start. And then I say next question. And I'll read the question. Go to the next one. And then we get feedback. All right? So and pen down. I'm going to get everybody up here. So I'm not going to use everybody on the video. But I'm going to, I'm going to want you to come. So I'm going to ask Sophie and um, Dorothy to come. So come, come close to the mic. mic. So I'm going to make Sophie go read the question and um, go for it. Oh, do I show my finger? No, you just say it over her and then out. So just tell us what you think about it revealed to you. Okay, so I felt that your favorite color was gold. I wrote down your favorite place to visit. I got US, like somewhere in the States. I can't specify where, but somewhere. Maybe you got family there or something. Um, past jobs. Okay. I wrote down like sales assistant. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> like just something to do with sales, like being in front of something. Um, dream job. I wrote fashion somewhere. <laughs> something <laughs> to do with fashion. Um, and favorite food. I wrote fish tacos. Whoa! <laughs> I wrote fish tacos. Yeah. All right. So what was the favorite color? Gold. Yeah, so you, you give her, so you respond to her and then. Alright, so I don't really have a favorite color, but I like anything that involves the sea and like the seascapes, and so gold and the sand color. Nice. It's one of those things that's like a base color that I, I like. Okay. What was the favorite place to visit? Place to visit the US. I don't know if it's my favorite place to visit, but I was saying to him, all I want to do in the next couple of weeks is go to Miami and just go to a mall. Like, nice. It's, it's so yeah, yeah. He wants to go on this long summer vacation. I'm like, just send me to a mall for two days. I'll be fine. Right? Um, what was the next one? Uh, so, past jobs. My very, my very first job was not in the front of a store, but I worked in a bookstore as a teenager. Okay. So, in retail? Yes. Um, uh, dream job, fashion, something to do with fashion. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with where I want to go. Maybe, maybe, maybe the joy. <laughs> yeah, the, I was going to say she wanted to go And I love tacos. It doesn't matter what's in them. I love tacos. Okay, yeah. All right. So I didn't listen to the instructions and I started writing the um, answers as he was saying them. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know why. And so I said favorite color, like deep reds and pinks and like magenta, like those deep red colors yes. or deep like, I don't know, something like deep colors. Deep. Yeah, yeah. Um, favorite place to visit. I saw like rolling hills like Tuscany, so Italy. Like, I just saw lots of green hills, and that's what I associated it with was Italy. Um, for past job, I saw a cash register, and so I said, you know, something to do with bookkeeping or even cash, like something to maintaining accounts or something. I don't know. Um, dream job, <laughs> I saw travel, and so I, saw, I started writing pilot stewardess travel blogger. <laughs> <laughs> and a favorite food, I said tacos. Maybe that was mine. But then, as I was thinking about it more, I thought of Mar Mar is it mascarpone? Mar Mas oh my god, mascarpone! <laughs> 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 give us feedback. Give us feedback. Give us feedback. Give us feedback. Okay. So, what did you say my favorite color was? Deep, like, like okay. deep reds, blues. I don't know something purple. So color. recently, I've started to paint my own nails because you know I want to start with pigs. I'm trying to like save money, and but I always when they say choose your color, that's my color. I go for like deep red, <laughs> deep purple, like deep. They always yeah, say when well, I choose your color, it's one? deep. Favorite place to visit mm -hmm. Italy. So I got it like Italian heritage, and I love Italy, especially in the south. Uh -huh. um, past jobs. I am around um, cash registers quite a lot, and I take appointments and make them. So like around reception areas. Wow. Um, I love traveling. I do. I've met somebody here that I'm very in love with, and I don't want to leave them. But I have told them if it ever goes to part, I'm off, and I'm going to travel. That's what wow. my plans are. And favorite food. Um, I've been making cheesecakes. I've been on a mission. And mascarpone. I won't use Philadelphia. I only get mascarpone. What is mascarpone? Oh, so it's like an extra rich, thick. Cream to make no bake cheesecakes with. So I made a no bake Oreo one with it. I made a Kinder Bueno one with it. So that's, that's awesome. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Awesome. Okay, go on this side. Let me go on this side now. Let me try Amadeo and Adrian. You want to come up? You guys got to do it together. Richard and Ryan, you want to try it out? Come on. Give it up for Richard and Ryan, R&R. &R. Yeah, buddy. Come. It's that short, so let's come anywhere. You go first, Richard. I'm going to go first? All right, so. Um, I'll take it so as we were talking about colors, um, that particular color came in mind and Felix said it at the same time. So what I had for you was favorite color was green. Um, when we were talking about favorite place to visit, all of a sudden, well, I was thinking Europe, but then I just saw the image of Big Ben. So London, um, past jobs, I don't know. I just, I was thinking IT. And the dream job I had for you was, when I was quiet, my eyes would close, I just saw these wings flying over, so I, I, um, I put pilot. And the favorite food um, in my mind, I just saw, um, uh, what's it called, penny pasta, so I, I just put pasta. So, I don't know, you let me know. Give me feedback, give me some feedback. Yeah, give me some feedback. Good job, Ryan, how we doing? Favorite color is blue. Okay, straight on that one. Um, what was the next one? Uh, favorite place to visit? Um, I said London. London? Um, no. No. So, so I don't know my favorite place to visit, but... No. Uh, I don't think the I other know. option I had too was um, like Germany, and then I just had like just Europe in general. And yeah, Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. I like Switzerland. Yeah, I like going oh, Okay. Yeah. And then um, past jobs, I had IT. IT. Uh, the only job I've ever had is uh, I work as an editor oh. in film. So yes. Okay. Wow. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh. Computers. Good. Yeah. Okay. And then the dream job I had for you was pilot. <laughs> I'm terrified of planes. No. 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 Favorite place to visit. It's not the favorite place to visit, but it's the frequent. most frequent place to visit, <laughs> and that's Florida. So you could probably say, yeah, you know, it is a favorite place. Um, past jobs. What did you have to have again? Uh, okay. um, I've worked in banking basically my whole life. Yeah. So you spot on there. Um, and then what did you have for dream job? Dream job missionary. <laughs> don't speak that. Don't speak that. <laughs> You're a missionary here? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love ministry, so I, I don't know. Yeah. It's a calling. Yeah. It's a calling. It's a calling. Yeah. Yeah. And then favorite food? Chocolate. Not really, but I like my little desserts now and then, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. give us all the hearts. I just like to say that Tell remember that Switzerland is so famous for its clocks. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's clocks. So maybe you oh, saw yeah, clocks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Watches. Watches. Cartier. So your reference was Big Ben, yeah. but his reference was Switzerland with the Swiss watches. Yeah. yeah. Amen. But well, that's good. Okay, okay. I'm going to go in the middle. So Nikki and Charlie, you guys want to try it out? <laughs> Come on, Nikki and Charlie. Come on down. The word is right. <laughs> I don't want. I don't bring Nikki because Charlie's a visitor. I don't want. Come this way. Go Nikki, go Nikki. Go Nikki. Do you spell Charlie with a Y at the end or I-E? I-E. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> okay. So, favorite color, I had orange, red at first, and then I saw an ocean 
also. So I don't know if you're temperamental with your colors. Um, so I had like orange, red, and then I saw an ocean, so blue. I feel like you can go back and forth. Maybe you don't have one, maybe you're flexible. It's cool, whatever you feel that day. Um, favorite country to visit? I immediately saw Iceland, um, but then I kind of took that, not specifically Iceland, and, made, and then said maybe cooler areas. Um, nature-esque areas, adventure exploration areas. Australia is another one I thought of. So Australia. <laughs> um, so just exploration type, not necessarily with the heat, always. <laughs> um, past jobs, titles, experiences. I had the arts, um, and then I also had water. So I don't know if you've done something on the water or with water, or if you're artistic. I believe everybody's artistic, but in that field. Um, forgive me if that's wrong. Dream job, I saw animals and I also saw protection. So I don't know if you're into like, if you like your dream or something you're passionate about is protecting the environment or people or animals. Um, but I saw you as kind of like an environmentalist, but not always animals, but it could be people and just doing good for the earth. Um, favorite food, I also saw pasta. Um, but spaghetti or pizza. Um, but and then I also had something like, are you vegan? Are you vegetarian? I don't know if that's, I don't know, but like that was just a quick question that I had on the side, but that was a last minute thing. I don't know if that was like, cause we brought up food allergies and sensitivities. Maybe that was me making something up, but I had pasta, spaghetti, and then also pizza. So. All right, speed bop, speed bop. Spaghetti, good job, good job, my favorite color is either green or black, so ocean, sort of. Depends Not on really go. orange or red, but okay. green, yeah. Favorite place to visit, um, never been to Iceland or Australia. Maybe that's where I'll go next. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the ideas. <laughs> um, past jobs, I've never gotten paid for something in the arts, but I have been in bands and I played the cello all my life. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Uh, my dream job, <laughs> one of my dream jobs is uh, Forest Ranger. Whoa! My favorite food is spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> 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 Alright, give it up for uh, Nikki. Charlie, your turn to hit the X. Alright. So for your favorite color, I was getting blue. Favorite place to visit, Canada. Past jobs, nurse. Going hard nurse on that. <laughs> Dream job, musician. Favorite food, salmon. Oh, give a feedback, give a feedback, give a feedback. Give it up for Charlie. <laughs> My hair color is green and ocean teal. So specifically ocean teal, like I'm bougie like that. So like if it's baby blue, that's garbage. Like ocean teal, okay? So you're spot on with that. That is equally loved. Sorry, baby blues. Um, their country to visit, um, Canada, is specifically the West Coast, British Columbia, Prince Edward Island, all of that. Um, I have never, what was the past job, I'm sorry? I've never been enrolled in nursing classes, but I am very much the nurse of my household. And I do believe that I have a natural, like maternal mothering, mother hen instinct for friends and family. So I will take that, but I haven't been paid for it, unfortunately. But, um, but that is spot on. Dream job, musician. If I were that musically inclined, I would definitely play the cello. I'm a strings person for sure. So. I'll accept that. Um, food. What did you say? Salmon. I do enjoy my salmon. I had some, when did we have some? Last night? We made some nice baked salmon at 450 degrees for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I absolutely enjoy salmon. So thank you.